with the weather, amen? Yeah, everybody had a good week? Hey, you made it through, so that's a good week, right? There you go. So look, it's early in the morning. It's the Sabbath. So we just going to come out singing. Everybody clap your hands. So the song, the title, is just not a title. It actually means everybody clap your hands. So there's like 12 of us. It shouldn't be that hard, right? And you can't hide, because I'm going to see you not clapping. So I want everybody, everybody, to clap their hands. It's all right, Gene. You can clap this morning.
one more time. Bless the Lord. Holy Father, how blessed we are. You have trusted us with life one more time. We offer that life back to you today in this simple act of worship. We recognize your presence, for we cannot invite you to your house. You've invited us. Bless us today because we have come 
because we fought through the week and fought through our own issues and we said today we will be in the Lord's house honor us therefore with blessings restore our souls rejuvenate our spirits lift our burdens cast aside our fears and we adore and thank you for being the God that we need so desperately and for the gift of Jesus we pray and the people said amen good morning CPC let us hear a word from the Lord I'll be reading this morning from the book of Psalms chapter 37 verse 5 I'll be reading in your hearing from the New King James Version commit your ways to the Lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass may the Lord add a blessing to the hearing reading and application of his word Let's do our mission statement together. This is who we are. We repeat it every week, not to just have something to do, but to remember what we're here for. You ready? Community Praise Center is a family of churches transforming lives in Christ, teaching life through Christ, experiencing the life of Christ. You may go ahead and be seated. Joys and concerns. You know, I just want to touch on a couple things and then highlight one thing, and then we'll have our elders pray for us. We want to remember those who have lost loved ones, but we also want to celebrate those who have births in their families. Amen? Amen. It's a cycle of life. And it's a big God. He can keep track of every life that is new on the earth, and he remembers every life that was lived on the earth. We, we want to remember those who are facing illness, cancer, diabetes, more we want to remember those. But I want to focus on one thing, and that's the tragedy that took place this week nearby us at the Naval Yard. We cannot comprehend to us the world that we live in that somebody with a sickness could go in and just point a gun randomly at people that he's upset with and take their life away. And already, this is, what, this, this is the type of world we live in. Hear me out, folk. That we've almost already moved on to something else. But there are 12 families who have not moved on, who have lost a husband and a wife, a father, a son, a daughter. But I want you to know we don't need to lose hope. Some people say, well, I don't understand. I mean, here comments, you know, if God was God, he would have prevented that. Well, God is God, and he can do whatever he wants, and he can do more after the fact than he can before the fact. And I'm not going to question what God decided to do and when he decides to do it, I'm just going to trust that he is who he is and he'll do what he'll do when he wants to do it. Amen? So this prayer session, we want to remember the families and people impacted from this horrible tragedy. And while we move on from it, let's not forget that God is still in control. Amen? So whatever you have going on in your life... It's as big a deal to God as what happened this week. Because it's happening to you, he cares about you, and he cares about what happens in your life. Our tradition here in first service is to stand, gather across the aisle, hold hands, and as we do that, stand up, go ahead and do that, and Elder uh, Conte will pray for us here in a moment. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for inviting us to your house. We thank you that in spite of the problems around the world, you are still God and is still in control. So, Lord, in the wake of the Washington shooting, the ravaging floods in Colorado, and all the problems around the world, we come before you 
knowing that the only peace we have in this world is by having a relationship with you. So, Lord, whether there is anyone here going through searching for a job, going through disease, whatever our problems are this morning, we come to you knowing that you are in control and you'll take care of us. Lord, be with our church family today. Be with our visitors. Lord, we dedicate our internet program and those watching around the world. Be with them as they watch to find you and to find joy in you. Lord, we dedicate today's service. Be with those that are still on the way, but above all, be with the preacher too. That whatever he speaks today will be a word that will come directly from you. Lord, us fill us now with a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Be with all the sick, the short and be with our children, Lord, especially the teenagers. Be with those that are rebelling, knowing that you are still there and that you can bring them back. Fill us now with a double portion of the Holy Spirit. This we ask you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. that time of the service to invite all the young boys and girls for the children's story, man. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Okay, now I'm going to pick someone, and I want you to say good morning to my Internet friends. Who can say that? Good morning to my Internet friends. You can say that? All right, go ahead. Good morning to my Internet friends. All right, very good, very good. Now. There is one question that I have for the boys and girls this morning, and that is, do you have a grandmother? Oh, there's a few hands that come up. If your grandmother's in the audience, she wants to see your hand go up. <laughs> well, I had a grandmother, and you know what my grandmother used to do on Friday night? She would teach me and some of her other grandchildren Bible verses. What she used to do? Teach us Bible verses. Now, here's one that I remember from way back in the day when I was probably your age. Now, what is your age? How old, how old are you? Anybody that knows how old they are, just raise their hand. <laughs> okay. How old are you? Eight. All right. So when I was eight, I'm thinking it was probably a little earlier. Here is a Bible verse from Colossians 4, 6. Let your words be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Seasoned with what? Salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Now, all throughout my life, whenever I hear that verse, I'm reminded of my grandmother 
And oftentimes when I use salt, I think about that. Now, let's just check. I need a volunteer. Now, wait, before you get your hand up, listen to what I need to volunteer for. <laughs> I'm going to put something in your hand. I'm going to shake it in your hand, and I want you to taste it with your tongue. So if you're game, all right, come on. There's one. Now, I need a boy old enough to know what a dare is. So you're going to come? All right. Okay. So now what I have here, I think everybody will recognize this. This looks like what? Now, just in case you don't know what salt tastes like, which one of you would like to figure out what salt tastes like? Okay. So you have an idea. So, but I don't want you to taste until I say so, okay? So let's be sure we can get some in there. Okay, got a little bit, don't do anything yet. Then I have a surprise product. All these ladies and gentlemen came right from the kitchen. And you may have that at home, but we're not going to reveal what this one is yet. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit in your hand. Okay, there's a, now... When you taste it, just a little bit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please pray for us right at this time. Okay, so now, are we ready to do our taste test? Okay, now I want you all to know that in the young man's hand, there is P-E-P-P-E-R. Now, if everybody up here knows how to spell, they know exactly what this is. Okay. Now, I, I want you to just taste just a, just a very, very little bit. I'm serious. Very, very little bit, okay? Okay, you try yours, and you try yours. And we want to get reaction. Now, you got to go quick. Our time is going. Go. Just taste a little bit. Very good, very good. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you think? Now, boys and girls, let me tell you what. Okay. All right, so we have a reaction up here. Okay, so now let's see what we're going to have. Okay, put this in your bag. What you have in your hand, just dump it in the bag, and you can go back and sit down real quick, very quick. Okay, good. He's taking him a while to get it off his hand. Okay, thank you. Now, if you get too much salt, you won't like it. But how many of you have had, like, popcorn with no salt on it? Is it good? No, but when you put salt on it, it's much better, right? So let's see what is our verse for today. Let your words be always with grace. By the way, let your what? Words be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you should answer every man. All right, now let us know your name real quick. DJ. Now what DJ had was pepper. Now notice how many of you had pepper on your food? It's, what is it? It is spicy. Now, what if you put too much pepper? It's going to be really spicy. Really spicy. Okay, now the Bible didn't say, let your words be always with pepper. <laughs> let it always be with salt, gracious, well received, so that as your friends are coming, they won't run from you and say, I don't like her because her words hurt. They are so hot. I like those who have words that are seasoned with salt so that we may know how we ought to answer every man. Okay, ask your moms and dads to find that verse for you when you get home. Okay, who will have prayer for us? You will have prayer for us? Come. Is your you going to have prayer with her? Oh, yes. Okay, so we had, looks like brothers and sister, maybe? Okay, all right, let's go sister first. Please bow our heads, children. Go, please. Dad, Jesus, thank you for my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother. And help me to feel better. And help me to stay with my dad and my mom at Chuck E. Cheese. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, would you like to pray as well? Thank they, you. They just take up for my mommy and my daddy, Jimmy, Jasper, and Chuck and Chloe. I'll go through many nanny be grandpa, so I boo-boo, so what's up and all. Amen. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. You can return to your moms and dads.
Amen. Thank Uncle Ron for that story. I tell you, when you put a microphone in a child's hand, you better pray. <laughs> I'm going to ask Pastor Almeida to come this time. Lose him. Someone single him to come on out. I'm going to take just a few moments, and since this service will be shared with Dulles, to introduce Pastor Almeida. And now, if Christy Ellen and Stephanie will come. She went looking for you, sir. The second service congregation two weeks ago had a chance to meet our new youth pastor, but our first service congregation, nor our Dulles congregation, has had that privilege, and he'll be ministering to both congregations today through his sermon. Our new youth pastor is Pastor Joel Almeida. Joel Almeida. His wife is Christy Ellen. His daughter is Stephanie. Let's welcome them. We've already found him to be an excellent team member. Sitting on our staff meetings, you would, uh, this congregation would be very amused at our staff meetings sometime, the interplay between the strong personalities that we have. And Joel has already proven he's not intimidated by any of us. He just speaks right up, speaks his mind, which is what we like. It's what the senior pastor likes. I don't want any yes man team members. He comes to us from Brazil, but is a U.S. citizen. Has his master's degree and with an emphasis in preaching. And his B.A. degree. with emphasis in languages, both English and Portuguese. He speaks three languages, English, Portuguese, and Spanish. He is a singer and a musician. <laughs> he said he used to be a singer before he got to CPC. <laughs> no, I, I can appreciate that, what that means. <laughs> I can appreciate what that means. Uh, that's, that's, that's well said, my friend. <laughs> but I, I found it interesting as, as when I first was introduced to his Vita. He's been a teacher. He's a graphic designer. Uh, he has worked as an assistant to an attorney. Uh, just a host of head, the media center, financial director and general manager, lay evangelist and singer. I mean, he's just, he brings us a lot of skills. But the thing, when he first interviewed before the search committee, the thing that impressed us the most was the sincere, unabated, unpretentious spirituality. And as you get to know him, you'll see he's just who he is. There's no pretense in this gentleman. He's a servant of the Lord. And we're just very, very happy to have him on our team. I think probably, uh, Joel, the thing that was maybe most convincing for us because when we interviewed you, we had several parents on the team. And one of the parents, one of our parents who was most exacting and critical, when Joel left the room and we discussed, this parent said, there's a man I can trust with my children. And I think that said mountains to us. And so to Dulles and to our first service congregation, our online congregation, second church congregation has already met this man of God. 
It is our joy to present to you as the new youth pastor, and I stress youth pastor. I'm stressing this because I got an interesting call this week when we introduced you two weeks ago. I began to get calls from people saying, Pastor Wright, I didn't know you were leaving. Who is this new pastor? <laughs> youth pastor <laughs> of CPC, and uh, we know that God will bless you as you hear the word of God from him. Before he brings us his message, uh, our choir. We're so glad to have our choir back with us. So glad to have our choir back with us. Amen. Will bless us with music and then the word of God from Pastor Almeida. Let us love our new pastor, youth pastor. Let us love Christy Allen. Let us love Stephanie. What do you say? God bless you. You may be seated.
morning, church. It is my privilege to be here because God chose me to serve him here. And especially today, God chose me to be a channel so he can use me. And I pray that you may hear his voice, not mine at all. It's also a privilege to serve here under Pastor Wright, under his leadership. He is a man of God. You know that much better than I do. And it's a real blessing for us, my family and I, to be serving here and to be joining the CPC family. Now, Dallas family as well, it's a privilege to get to be together with you through technology, through internet, and I also greet my internet friends who are faithful, always there. I like to pray to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. You are wonderful. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for being here with us. Father, help us now to hear your voice only. Help us also to, to, to have a sense of your presence closer and closer to us, near in our hearts. Father, we love you, and that's why we are here this morning. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Amen. On top of the rock. You guys don't have the rock yet here? I have it there. Well, on the top of the rock. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, it's right there. Well, <laughs> that rock on the right side of the screen is called Gavia. It's one of the most famous rock in Rio, Brazil. Have you heard about Rio de Janeiro, Brazil? Yes? It's a beautiful city. I've been there a few times. But I've never been on the top of that rock. That rock is also called the beautiful rock, which is very beautiful. You can see that, right? Let's get a closer view here. And as you can see, there's sort of a platform. And someone once got the idea. Well, and if you start to hang glide from from there, from up there. So they start hang gliding from up that rock, from the beautiful rock. And once they started doing that, it was a famous thing. People go there from all around the world just to jump from that rock. But it's a mix of feelings. Can you imagine that scene? You know, you, I don't know if you're good. If, if you're a pilot or something, if you're okay with heights, but to be on top of the rock and see all that beautiful view from up there, it's gorgeous for me on a picture. But you know, to be up there, it's a mix of feelings. It's a mix of kind of fear, excitement, and wow, especially if you're thinking about jumping from up there. But if it's your first flight, then you have to jump with the instructor together with you. So you just go and you have to be a second, like an extension of, of, of the instructor. And that's how it goes the first lesson. You have to practice because you guys have to be one. Because if you or if I or if the first, if, 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 if the new guy there, if he messes up, both are going to die. So it's very important. The first lesson is very, very critical. You have to be one with the instructor. You guys have to, to run together at the same pace. And especially when you when you're start flying, you cannot jump. Because if you jump, you're going to mess with the whole hang glider. And it's, it can cause a stall. You can fall. So you cannot jump. 
You have to keep running until your feet starts to, to fly. Not touch the ground. You just keep running, running, running till the ground disappears. <sighs> and that's a platform. You, you just see that beautiful sightseeing there, that beautiful view. You start running and then... And they say, it's so much panic and so much fear, but you cannot think. You just jump. Just go. <sighs> well, that's the first flight. And they're, jump they're, they're running, almost about to fly. And you, you, you can notice who's the instructor there and who's the, who's the new one there, right? He just, he just left. Now he's feeling more comfortable. That, that's another one. He's feeling, ah, it's good. You know, fear is gone. Beautiful, isn't it? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being paid to, to make any advertisement here. I'm not, I, don't, I don't work for them. To be on the top, that's amazing. But the feeling you have when you're up there is something that the Bible describes for us. So let's take a look at the Bible. I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles on Psalm. On the book of Psalms. So Psalm 37, verse 5, which is a very well known verse. Some, most of us we know by heart. But I like it to open your Bible. Psalm 36, verse 5. In my Bible, New King James Version, it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him. And he shall bring it to pass. Well, I don't know if, you, if you're okay with this commit, with this verb. What does that truly mean, to commit to the Lord? First, I used to think like, to commit to the Lord is like, let's say I have my plans here. I, I have my whole life planned here. Now I, I, I get my plans I call the Lord right here together with me. And I put my plans right in front of him. And now we're going to discuss. Lord, what do you think of this? Uh, are you okay with this plan? What's your opinion about this? And that's okay. That's fine. In my understanding, that was to commit to the Lord. To submit to him what I have planned. But then this word, to commit to the Lord, in reality, in the original, it's, the real meaning is to unfold. To unfold. And then this sentence, the whole sentence, to unfold your ways upon the Lord, on the top of the Lord. That's what's really written there. Unfold your, your ways upon the Lord. Unfold your ways upon the Lord. To be on top of the Lord. In the context of the Bible, it was fairly common to have pagan worship and in the pagan worship the idols they were all in this position and uh, the parents used to take the offerings usually their children and put it on top of the idol to be sacrificed so to put on top of something for them to worship putting something on top of them means to take everything from you so you don't have any influence and you leave it there and you step back 
and let him take control. Unfortunately, many of those people, they used to do that for idols, for metal and stone. But what the Lord says here, please do that to me. Take your life, your ways, your ways, the Bible means, take everything you have planned, everything, and put it on top of my hands and step back. Ah, oh, that's hard. That's hard. How can you not give some opinions to the Lord? He's not able to take control of everything. You know, you have to give your opinion. He needs you. He needs me, you know. He cannot do everything alone. Come on. I have, I have to tell you, Lord, something. Because you don't know, you know. It's okay if you, if you find a girl for me to, to, to marry you to. It's okay. I'm going to accept the one you have chosen. But let me give my opinion. Let, let, let me tell you. That's not exactly the one. Lord, I have planned, and uh, I have this business on Monday. I have to close that, that deal. You know, you don't understand, Lord. I have to close that deal. But how am I going to close it? Then it's up to you. you. You just decide. You figure it out, you know. But I have to. You understand that? And when the Lord comes to us and he says, son, my daughter, are you truly placing that on my hands or it's, it's up to you? How's the deal? Are we negotiating your life? Or are you just putting everything on my hands and you're stepping back and let, let me take control? That's very hard to let God take control. Hmm. Very hard. I was living in Miami. Miami area. That's actually Fort Lauderdale. It's 45 minutes north. And uh, I have the privilege of having no car at that time. I'm going to repeat that. I had the privilege of having no car at that time. Because in having no car, I had the privilege to walk to work. And praise the Lord, it was a walking distance. One hour and a half walking distance. Every morning. That was fantastic. That's true, sister. That's true. That was fantastic. Because I, I wasn't that chubby at the time, you know. I was, I was in shape. One hour and a half walking, morning, one hour and a half afternoon, back home. But then one day, I had a fantastic idea to change my way. To go through another way. So, I was studying the map, and I thought to myself, listen up. I said, I thought to myself, <laughs> well, and if I, I, I wasn't married, uh, I was not dating my, my wife, I was living, I was renting a place, and so I was just going back home, nobody was waiting for me there, so I had all the time of the world, and let me just get to know the area, but the time that I decided to get to know the area probably was not the best one. Because it was around uh, 7.30 to 8 when I left my work. That was evening. And I was leaving my work and I decided to go through another way, another route. And then I talked to the Lord. Lord, I just decided... I decided to go through here. Can you protect me? Can you help me? Can you come with me? Let's go, Lord. Let's, let's, let's talk together. Let, let's just walk. And then we start walking. 
And that was great. And I was dressed up because I used to work in a, in a nice environment. I, I, I had to dress up. So, and I was walking back home, happy, walking. And then I was looking for a certain street because on that street, I was supposed to turn right. And then the first street, turn left. Okay. I had all the directions on my mind. So I was walking happy. When I saw that street, I turned right. And when I got on the first left, I turned left. By that time, it had taken me a lot longer than I have seen on the map. So at that time, it was around 9, 9 something at night. It was dark. And I was walking a bit naive, I can confess. I was walking there, and right at the corner, there was a man that I suppose he was probably drunk. And uh, he talked to me, and he said, you got a lighter, pal? I was like, a lighter? I don't smoke, I'm sorry. And I continued on the street, because I had plan, and it was that street. As I was walking on that street, I saw a church. I was like, yay, a church here. So, you know, people are friendly. There, there's going to be no problem. So I continue walking. I even start singing some songs with the church and walking. But all of a sudden, it seemed like all the houses around me start to disappear. There was no houses, just some small places far away from the street. And as I was walking, I saw in a distance, and it was like a circle of guys and a ball of smoke, like going up. And I was like, ah. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to change my way. <laughs> but there was, there was nothing I could do. So I continued walking and started to pray intensely, earnestly to God. Lord, save me. Because I know it wasn't a good idea. And maybe I should have talked to you and maybe I should have asked you, what, what do you think about this whole thing? Well, in walking there, that in the midst of that ball of smoke, I heard a voice. Hey, man, hey, what are you doing here? I was like, maybe it's me. They're trying to communicate. So I looked at them. And I didn't answer. I just looked ahead and I continued. But at that very moment, and I cannot explain that to you, I don't know how or where came a bicycle and a man riding on the bicycle. And that man, he was going around me, but I was walking here in the sidewalk. And there's obviously the, the curb. But he was going like there was no curb because he was so smooth. And he was going around me like in a distance from here at the piano, but he never got any closer. And he was with a, a laughter in, in, in his face and his eyes that I could see the enemy of God in him. And he looked like someone was trying to jump on me and destroy me or something but he could not get closer because i never stopped walking i continue walking and in my walk he never got any closer the circle was always far and i could see that someone was like with a hand with a big hand protecting me like this like a bubble and he was going around making circles and speaking in a language I, I couldn't understand. 
And then I looked at the other side of the street and I saw a group of about 20 young men in another bubble of smoke. And they also screamed and they start to shout and, and uh, hey man what are you doing here and when I looked at them they start to walk fast in my direction well they're in a distance like from here to the bottom of the church which is a couple of feet very close and when they start walking in a fast pace in my mind I looked ahead and I thought to myself, well, if I run, they're going to catch me. If I try to hide somewhere, they're going to catch me. So is there anything I can do? No. What can I do? I can continue praying. Then I start to talk to the Lord, like, Lord, now I am fully on top of you, in your hands. I am in your hands. I commit my life to you. Commit means not let's just reason together, let's stop. No. Commit means, Lord, here I am. Do whatever you want. Whatever you do is fine for me. If you tell me no, it's no. If you tell me yes, it's yes. But I will do whatever you tell me to do that's to commit your life to god and at that time i completely committed my way my life to him and i i looked ahead i continued walking and those guys never reached me i don't know what happened the bicycle all of a sudden disappeared. The guy just disappeared. And I continued walking. Everything was dark. And I walked for like two, three hours more till I reached home. That was a crazy idea. I never walked that same route ever again. <laughs> Not even during the day. I passed once by car. But the point is to commit your life, to commit your way, to commit everything to God is to place yourself in such a way, in such a position that when the Lord tells you, son, my daughter, you need to trust in me. You need to trust. So when, when the Bible says, commit your ways to the Lord, trust in Him. It doesn't mean like, oh, I know the Lord is good. He's going to do some good things for me. No. It means even if He does something that I don't understand, like Pastor Waterman was just saying here, even if something that I don't understand happens to me, I will still continue putting my life on top of God's hands and I'll still continue here just watching him taking care of everything it doesn't mean like if if I think that uh, maybe God is messing up a little bit let me help him because he, he's not he's not you know working properly the way it's supposed to be even when my aunt was like a second mother to me is dying in bed with cancer I still continue committing my life to God because he is taking care even when I lost my son when I lost my daughter when I lost a loved one my father my mother when I when I when I've lost things I continue trusting in the Lord because he is good because he is merciful 
because he's tender. Because he loves you and me like crazy. And like I was telling to the youth last Sabbath, if God had a fridge, your picture would be there. <laughs> he loves you like crazy. He loves you like so much. You are the favorite daughter of God. You are the favorite son. He says that in the Bible. He can even die for you and me. What else you want? What else I want? To commit my life, everything I have to the Lord and trust beyond my reasoning, beyond I can understand, beyond everything in my life, trust in Him. And the Bible says, and He will do it. This He will bring it to pass means He will do it. He will do it. Trusting in Him. He will make it happen. He will do it. Our time is constrained today. So I'd like to invite you. I know this verse is very spread all around. People know this verse. It might be so common in our family worship, we may say that verse, that's a beautiful verse. But above all, I'd like, I, I like to invite you to memorize this verse in a new conception. Whenever you say that verse, I want you to truly mean, commit my ways to the Lord. It means I'm going to take everything I have and I'm going to place in God's hands, everything I have, even when it makes no sense for me. I'd like to invite you just to stand up. You don't need to, to come. You need to, to step up here. Just stand up. I'd like to invite you in a personal commitment to the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord and let's trust in Him and let's let Him take care of the rest let's pray dear Lord Father it's so hard so hard for us to surrender to give everything to place our lives our heart everything on top of you, on your hands, and step back and let you take control. Father, we have that desire, but we don't have strength. Father, we have people sick. We have loved ones dying. Sometimes we think the money is not going to be enough for everything we need to do. But Father, please help us to trust. Help us to commit our ways to you. To place our hearts and our lives entirely in your hands. We know you are big and we know how much you love us. So please help us to go beyond our reasoning. Even when we don't understand, help us, Father, to place our lives in your hands. Thank you very much for the privilege you gave us today to worship you and to commit all our ways unto your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you say amen?
How about uh, a, a praise to God for having a pastor like Pastor Joel? And we are thankful that we have Christy, Ellen, and Stephanie, the beautiful family. Are you happy to be here? Are you getting settled in? Is this not an awesome church? It's the best church. Amen? Yeah. So they're excited. You know, we want to do something here over the next, just here in the next few minutes. And uh, I'm going to invite the staff, all the staff to come out with me. Don Powell, any staff that's not here, you can just come right up the front. And ask you guys to come. And just kind of gather here in the back. It's a good looking group of people, isn't it? Now we need Pastor Wright. Anybody know where Pastor Wright is? You're getting Pastor Wright? Also need to give props to our video team today. They've been working on the fly, trying to get something working. John and his team, it's been an amazing thing. Thank you. Sister Carol, I want to ask you to come up, if you don't mind. How you doing, sir? You know, we, uh, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. And we, want, we need to rectify the mistake. We, you know, it's just, it's, don't worry about it. It'll be all right. You, you get, we're still friends, right? <laughs> we, uh, we made a mistake. It's August 21, not September 21, that Pastor Wright celebrated 20 years at CPC. And, and not only Pastor Wright, who celebrated 20 years of ministry, but Sister Carol, who gave her heart in ministry, too. Now, I just want to, I'm going to just share just a little something, and I hope you'll forgive me, honestly. I remember the story that you told me and you shared with us, how you had taken some time off ministry, you came and interviewed with this church, and you came home and you weren't sure, and it was due to your wife. You can thank Sister Carol that she let God use her to influence Pastor Wright to say yes to come pastor here at CPC. That looks nice on you. And we have a little commemorative thing we'd like to give you. I'm sorry it's not much. It's just it's what we've done as a staff. We know you, like, you don't like fancy things, so we said we'd just keep it simple. Okay? Keep it simple. We just want a little commemorative plaque. Pastor Henry M. Wright and Sister Carol Wright, 1993 to 2013. Commemorating 20 years of pastoral ministry at Community Praise Center, Seventh-day Adventist Church. With deep appreciation for your servant leadership. Amen? Amen. Servant leadership. Inspired preaching. And here's the one we like the best. Faithful love to us.
I am really, really surprised. <laughs> I don't know how they pulled this off. People have been saying kind of little odd things to me. Someone mentioned to me, said to be sure to get a haircut and be dressed nice. I thought they'd lost their mind. <laughs> And then now I remember a staff meeting where I dismissed staff meeting and I left and came back to the room and these folk were gathered together and got this funny look when I came in the room and I'm the boss, I'm the boss. <laughs> so I couldn't figure what was going on and different ones have been hugging me in the special kind of way. Folks usually don't hug me, just hugging me. And <laughs> this is really special, and I'm very grateful. Um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't feel 20 years, but then I feel 20 years. And uh, this, is, this means more to me than I can find words, because I have given my life to this congregation. You have all of me, my prayers, my love, my support, my counsel. I wake up in the morning with you. I go to bed at night with you. There's not a congregation on the face of the planet more loved by their pastor than you are loved by me. this time. Thank you, Pastor Wright. Thank you, team. Sorry it's only a plaque, uh, but it comes from the heart. I'm going to ask Elder if you'll come forward now and do the tithes and offerings. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone among us who can count the ways God has been good to you? Well, this is a time to return to him just to a token of your appreciation. Be generous. God has been generous to us. The deacons will wait on us for the tithes and offering. I'm sure we're all choked up, but we're still going to try to sing his praises. Amen. Pass me not.
our online worshipers, please go to www.cpcsda.org and click on the link that says online giving. Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, we are grateful for the opportunity to participate in your great work by returning to you tithes and a free will offering. We ask that you will bless it, bless those who gave and those who had none to give. We glorify your name and look forward to praising you through the ceaseless ages of eternity. In Jesus' precious name we pray. now that the parents of Darius Uzziah Marandure come forward for the dedication of their child, Titiana and Shingai. Come right up, Titiana, right up here next to the pastor. Shingai. You know, this is amazing stuff. This guy used to hug my legs. <laughs> Every Sabbath, he came and hugged the pastor's legs. Now I'm dedicating his son. The rest of the family will come now. The grandparents and family support, please come and gather around. If you're here for the dedication, come. Don't be shy. Don't whisper to one another, folk. Just come. That's it. Don't be shy. This is the time when the family needs your support. Darius. Shanghai, you and Tatiana now come and look at me. Folk, don't be shy. If you're coming, come. Nothing that's gonna bite you up here. Just come. stuff, Shanghai. <laughs> but a new era in your lives. Parents. That's a big word. Mommy. Daddy. Big words. I've got a text for you. I looked up Titiana this text in 1 John 3. Starting in verse 9, this is what it says. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. The Greek says does not habitually commit sin because we all sin. But does not make it their habit to sin. For his seed remaineth in him, that is, God's seed and he cannot sin that is habitually because God is in you he is born of God then verse 10 is very interesting in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God neither he that loveth not his brother what's laid before 
the human family in these two texts are choices. Parents have very powerful choice-making influence. Will this little guy choose to be a child of God or choose to be a child of the devil? And his chances to Tim for making the right choice rely on his mommy and his daddy. Wow. See, the verse 9 said that if you have the seed of God in you, you've already committed. He, he, he has no commitment power. He can't commit himself to anything. But you, starting today, can commit him to the way of righteousness if, if, yeah, Shanghai, if you have first made a commitment to the way of righteousness. You see it, Titiana? So the songs you teach him, the music he hears, the words he hears, the books that you purchase will all be choices. This is the scary part. I reared three sons, and the first years of their life, I was making the choices for them. And so God holds you accountable as to whether he chooses to be a child of God, a child of Satan. You can't teach what you don't know. You can't share what you don't do. So boy, have you taken on something now? Shingai, you and I have something else in common now. Used to be what we had in common. We were both believers in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, we're both daddies. Lord have mercy. <laughs> my, 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 my. I never thought, Shingai. But here we are. So, God will give you what you need. Now, Shingai, those things you've heard your pastor preach about for 20 years, prayer, Bible study, worship, no more theory. You got to do it for his sake. Do you see it? I know you do. And pastor's counting on both of you to do exactly what God expects. Hold the mic up for me. That's the choir. That's the choir. And that's the congregation. Let's welcome him to church. <laughs> Shall we pray, Lord God? The problem with us is that we start stuff, but we can't finish anything. And so now these two have brought forth a child. You must finish what has been started. But you were part of the life force. So really, he's your child. So Lord, rear your child. And may not Titiana, nor the father, Shingai, get in your way. May they be your servants filled with your seed, so that one day this little man will walk on streets of gold. This we pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the people said, Amen. Amen. We want to, as our custom is, issue a certificate of baby dedication, which simply says, this certifies that Darius Isaiah Maranduri, born January 25th, 2013, at Inova Fairfax Hospital, was with duly and with prayerful concern presented to the Lord in dedication by Tatiana and Shinga Maranduri on the 28th day of September 2013 by our senior pastor. And we want to present to you, along with your Bible, child guidance. 
read it filled with many, many wonderful words that will help you rear this little one. God bless you both. We did this dedication today so that Granddaddy Marandore could go back to Africa with his grandson dedicated. <laughs> Keep uh, Denny in your prayers. He'll be returning to Africa, what, next week? Week after next. So God be praised. Lots of things going on today. I'm going to ask the Bridges family to come, please. He's coming. Where's Rad? Oh, here he is. Okay. We all know Conrad, church treasurer, Darius, young man of the church, and Bridges, Dr. Cheryl Bridges head of music ministry for the past 13 years. Two weeks ago, last part of August, Cheryl accepted the opportunity to become the music ministry director of the Sligo Church. Amen. Now you're right for your applause to be subdued. It's bittersweet. We're happy for Cheryl. Let me just say this and in, 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 so you understand the full picture. Cheryl has served us for 13 years on a half salary. She's never received full salary or health benefits because in the system of the Potomac Conference, you're given a certain amount of salaries based on tithe and offering. There's only one church in the conference that returns more tithe and offering than us, and that's Sligo. They have 3,000 members. We have 1,200. Cheryl has an opportunity to move to Sligo as the pastor of worship. She'll be a full-time pastor with a full-time salary and full-time benefits. But let me clarify, even if we had been able to provide Cheryl with the full salary, I still would have encouraged her to take this call. Here's why. She's at the beginning of her career. You don't spend 15, 16, 20 years <laughs> at the beginning. You can do that at the end, but not at the beginning. I wanted her to have a wider breadth of experience. Cheryl has positioned herself to make some very important contributions to the future of this church. She's unique in that here is a person who has a doctor's degree in the area of worship and is over music, she is non-duplicable in this church right now. So for her to go to Sligo and broaden her experience is something that we felt, though we were torn inside, would be a good move for her even if we could have provided her with the full salary and with the full benefit. She has served us well. On October the 19th, we will give her a former farewell. But to keep down rumor and bric-a-brac and talk and so forth, we are making the announcement today. She'll be formally introduced to Sligo on October 12th. Uh, we'll be wrapping up her duties here. She's been a tremendous team member here at CPC. opportunity we'll have we'll have opportunity to 
to farewell her properly on the 19th of October. And of course, it's a double loss. This cool, calm brother <laughs> that walks by her side has been a faithful, competent, responsible person whom his pastor trusts treasurer over millions of dollars for how many straight years? Nine years. And so we're losing a family of ministry, and we've watched Darius grow up in our midst, faithful young man, talented and so forth, and of course, um, um, Darius is also very key to our Pathfinder Club. So, you know, it's, this is this is this is this is this is tough, y'all. This is tough. But the fact, you know, there's nothing like leaving your footprint. They've done that, and I don't want to say too much because there's much to be said later on. So, we want to thank them, but we want to most of all today just let you know it is true. You've heard about it. It is true. Uh, they are leaving us, and. Uh, uh, we'll we'll do the proper farewells uh, at the uh, in October. So, um, bless you. We'll show our love a month from now. Cheryl, thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. One more announcement. Wish to announce today the engagement of our lay pastor. Pastor Glenn Palmer to Joe Lee, sitting next to him. Would you please stand? They are now engaged to be married. You know, I have been, uh, thank you, you may be seated. I've been away quite a bit the past several weeks, and I've discovered if you go away, a lot of things go on. <laughs> Congratulations again, Glenn. Just as we finish up, a couple of announcements. There's something going on next week. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called what? International Day. We got the tent set up. You know, we got them set up early due to a scheduling conflict. So we're ready for that. Now, next week, keep this in mind because you'll be sitting here all by yourself if you're not listening. There will be no first service next week. There will only be one main service at 12 o'clock, second service time. So we'll start <laughs> Sabbath school at what time? 10.45. Then second service will be our only service. All right? That's the primary announcement. You, you, you know how to read, so check the announcement boards, check your weekly informer, check the CPC reporter of all the things that will be going on. Now, oh, there will be a board meeting this Tuesday night, finance committee prior to it. So we want to, that's five, five, 7 o'clock for finance. 7.15, and then we'll be board meeting afterwards. For all of you on the board, please come. Please be there present. I need to know if we have any first-time visitors here today. If you're a first-time visitor, we want to love you, but we don't know who you are if you won't stand up and at least identify yourself. I know it's kind of a little bit awkward in new places to stand up, but we love you. We want to, there's, see, there's one. We, and you see them coming up, standing up around you. Now, keep standing. Please, please stand back up. If you are sitting around one of these visitors, please shake their hand. If they'll let you, give them a hug. We have a gift for you. If you're looking for a church to call home, we'd love to be it. If you're just visiting, passing through the area, we hope when you come through again that you will come visit with us again. All right? This officially concludes our first service. It's been a full service. We could go home today, and we've accomplished more than 10 other churches combined, right? And we made Pastor Wright cry. That in itself is a church service. Love you, Pastor Wright. Praise team, lead us out of this service. Sabbath school will Everybody be coming up please next. Please stand as we sing the closing song.
Holy Spirit.